God bless. Welcome to another installment of Sunday Shorts. Today, we're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 12. In this chapter, chapter 12, we're going to see some decisions that two men had to make. Big decisions. Decisions that not only impacted them, but impacted hundreds of thousands of people outside of them. And we're gonna see what they did, what was their technique, what was their process when it came to making these decisions. We talked about the death of Solomon last week. Upon Solomon's death, Rehoboam was made king. When all the people came up to Rehoboam and said, hey, we got a question for you. And that's how 1 Kings uh, chapter 12 starts off. So I'm gonna look at 12 verse four. So this is the people talking to Rehoboam. Your father made our yoke harsh. You, therefore, lighten your father's harsh service and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we will serve you. Well, apparently, Solomon was giving the people a hard time. He was taxing them like crazy. He was making them work hard. He was a harsh leader. And so the people said, listen, real boom, if you just chill out, that'd be as harsh as your pops was, the people will love you and we'll follow you and it'll be all good. And so they pretty much asked him, how was he going to lead? How was he, what was his leadership style per se? How was he going to lead the people? And so Rehoboam, upon hearing this said, verse five, Rehoboam replied, go away for three days and then return to me. Now, the good thing that Rehoboam did here, when pressed with a decision, how was he going to lead? What was going to be his leadership style? He decided to pause, take a break. He told the people, say, listen, go away from three days and let me think about it. In making decisions, the first thing that Rehoboam did was good. He took time. When we're making decisions in our life, now we're going to have decisions. Sometimes our decisions just impact us. Sometimes our decisions impact others. But when we make decisions, it's a good idea to pause and take some time. Don't rush into the decision that you're about to make. We see that consistent in scriptures in Psalms chapter 24, verse four and five, it says, make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. I wait for you all day long. We have decisions that we have to make, big or small. The Bible teaches us it's a good thing to wait, to wait. Don't rush into it. Wait on the Lord. See which direction God is gonna take you in when it comes to this decision. And so Rehoboam, and taking a pause before making this decision, good move on his part. Verse six, then King Rehoboam consulted with the elders who had served his father Solomon when he was alive, asking, how do you advise me to respond to this people? They replied, today, if you will be a servant to this people and serve them, and if you respond to them by speaking kind words to them, they will be your servants forever. The second good thing that Rehoboam did in this case. First, he paused, he waited. He didn't rush to make a decision. The second good thing was he consulted advice. He went for counsel. Sometimes, unfortunately, we make decisions without seeking out counsel, without seeking out godly wisdom or godly advice from godly men and women. Rehoboam did good in this case. He went to the elders. The good thing about it was the folks that he went to, first of all, they were elders, the Bible said, that served his father Solomon. So two things we know about them. One, they were elders, so they had a little age on them, meaning they had more experience on matters than Rehoboam did. Matter of fact, they had more experience in leading people, in governing people than Rehoboam did because they served alongside his father, Solomon. And so when Rehoboam went for counsel, he went to the elders, he went with people to experience, and he went to ask them their opinion on what he should do. Again, that's consistent with what the Bible says. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 15, it says, a fool's way is right in his own eyes, but whoever listens to counsel is wise. Proverbs 15, 22 says, without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. We know this wisdom or this counsel or this advice that they were given was wise because it was biblical. It aligned with scriptures. It aligned to the standards that God had in place. When we look at scripture, it teaches us leaders that we should be servant leaders. We should lead in humility. Paul points that out in Philippians. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He humbled himself, even though he was God. He humbled himself. So as leaders, we should lead from a servant leadership perspective. The next thing they said, not only servant leadership, not only humility, but also kindness. It's the fruit of the spirit in Galatians. So Rehoboam went to these men, these elders, and they gave them wise, godly counsel. 
make sure before you make decisions that you seek out wise, godly counsel. Unfortunately, the story doesn't end there. As we keep reading in 1 Kings, you see verse eight says that, but he rejected the advice of the elders who had advised him and consulted with the young man he had grown up with and had attended to him. Reboam heard wise counsel. The Bible said that he rejected that counsel and he went and he sought advice from the young men he had grown up with. First of all, you have wise counsel and you have counsel of the young men you grew up with. Now, I'm not saying that all the boys or girls or the people that you grew, grew up with wouldn't give you good counsel. You have to make sure that the counsel you look toward is that counsel that is wise and is biblical. The Bible says some things about these people who went, first they were young, he grew up with them and they attended him. So these are the folks that as uh, real boom was, was waiting in the wings, as his father was king, uh, these are the, his boys. These are people he hung out with. The Bible said he attended them. These are people who accompanied him. They followed him. They did what he said do. They went and got what he said get. They were kind of his yes men. And so real boom went to this group of people, these groups of possibly yes men, and was like, look, I heard what these old folks say. What you guys think I should do? Verse 10, then a young man who had grown up with him told him, this is what you should tell them. My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Although my father burdened you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with barbed whips. Notice the contrast in the council. The elders, biblical wisdom that align with God's standard. His boys, the young men, not so much. They gave him bad counsel. And we see what Rehoboam did. Then when he came back to him, the Bible said the king answered the people harshly. He rejected the advice the elders had given him and he spoke to them according to the young men's advice. And he told them, my father make your yoke heavy, I'ma double that. My father beat you with whips, I'ma beat you with barbed wired whips. And we see the result of his decision. Verse 16, when Israel saw that the king had not listened to them, the people answered to him, what portion do we have with David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. Israel, return to your tents. The Bible goes on to say that because of Rehoboam's decision, the nation split. Those in Judah, they stayed with Rehoboam. But all of Israel, those other tribes, they at that point in time left. And so we have a division in the nation based on Rehoboam, making the wrong decision. Our decisions have consequence, saints. Though we might think they're small, though some might be large, every decision that we make has consequences. And we need to ensure that we follow the good things that real born did. Pause, wait on the Lord, seek counsel, seek wise counsel, and not follow the bad things that he did. Go after bad counsel and follow after and make the decision based on bad counsel. That was real boom, made a bad decision. And we see the results of that. The nation of Israel is divided. Keep going in the scripture. And it's funny how both of these guys had two decisions to make in the same chapter. We look at Jeroboam. So Jeroboam said, okay, if this is how real boom gonna be. We about to split up. And so he took the people and all of Israel went with him. So now Israel will start off with one King Saul and then one King David and then one King Solomon. Now we have the split with the two kings. Rehoboam, Judah on one side, and then Jeroboam and all the rest of the 10 tribes on the other side. Well, in uh, uh, verse 26, Jeroboam had a decision to make. And so as he set up his kingdom and set everything up and Jeroboam came to the conclusion and said, now, wait a minute, the temple is actually in Jerusalem. So I know we split, but we're still godly people. People are still gonna go and sacrifice. That means that they're gonna leave our country and travel down to Jerusalem. And they're gonna have to do that every year and, and often. And he started thinking if, if that happens, if people keep going down to Jerusalem where Rehoboam is king, pretty soon they're just gonna say, you know, we're gonna stay there. And then Rehoboam is gonna gain the whole kingdom again. He had to make a decision. What was he gonna do based on that? Verse 26, Jeroboam said to himself, the kingdom might now return to the house of David. If these people regularly go to offer sacrifice in the Lord's temple in Jerusalem, the heart of these people will return to their Lord, King Rehoboam of Judah. They will kill me and go back to the king 
king of Judah. So the king sought advice. Here we go again. Jeroboam faced with a big decision. What was he gonna do now? The Bible said he sought advice. Again, great job. Verse 28, I read the whole thing. So the king sought advice. Then he made two golden calves and he said to the people, going to Jerusalem is too difficult for you, Israel. Here are your gods who brought you up from the land of Egypt, pointing to the two golden calves. So he set up one of the calves in Bethel and he put the other in Dan. This, verse 30, led to sin. Jeroboam also made shrines in the high places and made priests from the ranks of the people who were not Levites. The Bible says he went on to make festivals. He went on to build altars and burn incense toward these two golden calves, these two idols that he made. Scripture says, the Bible says, you shall have no other gods before me. And for him to make these golden calves and say, okay, Israel, this is who brought us out of Egypt. Let's worship them. And it seemed like the people were cool. Ah, oh, you know what? It's too far to travel to Jerusalem anyway. We're just going to stay here and we're going to worship these idols. Bad decision based on bad counsel. Church, let's not follow in the footsteps of Rehoboam or Jeroboam. Let's make sure as we're faced with decisions as we come upon the new year, uh, as we come upon uh, decisions every day, let's make sure that we follow what the scripture said. We saw those verses in Proverbs about waiting patiently for the Lord. Proverbs chapter 14, verse seven says, stay away from a foolish person. You will gain no knowledge from his speech. The reason we seek advice is because we want some knowledge. We want some wisdom. We want some understanding from people about uh, this decision that I have to make. Proverbs says, stay away from fools. Definition of fools in Proverbs says, the fool says there is no God. A fool ignores God. A fool uh, dismisses God and dismisses God's way. And so when we look at a fool, God's standards, oh, that means nothing to them. God's commandments, oh, that means nothing to them. And so the wisdom, the knowledge, or the advice that they give is gonna to lead to death because of their rejection of God and his standard. The Bible says, stay away from fools. Proverbs 24, starting in verse five says this, a wise warrior is better than a strong one, a man of knowledge better than one of strength. For you should wage war with sound guidance, sound counsel. Victory comes with many counselors. Whenever we're ready to go to war, Whenever we have to accomplish a task, whenever we have to do something big or important, the Bible says that wisdom comes with counsel. We should look for sound guidance. Proverbs 11, 14 says, without guidance, a people will fall, but with many counselors, there is deliverance. As a body of Christ, as we make decisions for ourselves, for our family, for those around us, for the nation, we should make sure that we seek counsel from God, from godly men and godly women, and that we wait patiently on the Lord. One of my favorite verses that I go to is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It's a familiar one, but it's one that's so true and so helpful in those times where decisions uh, need to be made. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. King James says, And lean not on your own understandings, uh, uh, and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. King James says, And he will direct your path. Saints, when we have decisions to make, when we have to choose which way to go, we have to choose our next move. The Bible says clearly, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I love that. Sometimes I have to make decisions I don't know what to do. That's good. I shouldn't be dependent on me. I should lean on the Lord. Trust in the Lord versus leaning on my own decisions. That's what the Bible says. And then he says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. What that means is to pull God into your situation. Acknowledge him means in your situation, in your decision, pull God in, invite God in. Say, God, listen, I've got this decision to make. And so I am officially inviting you in, God. I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. I'm not going to try to figure this out myself. I'm going to invite you, God, into this situation. Huh, come, come have a seat. I'm inviting you into my decision, God, so that you can look around and I can hear your perspective. You see, when we invite God in, and I mean literally, I literally pray, okay, God, I got this decision made, God, I'm inviting you in. I am bringing you in, God. I'm not going to make decision on my own. I'm not going to uh, uh, determine what I'm going to do on my own. I'm going to invite you in. And and when we invite God in, 
to the situation. That's what God's comfortable. He's comfortable being in charge. He's comfortable helping us make the right decision. But we have to invite him in. In all your ways, in all your doings, in all your decisions, invite God in and he will direct your path. A situation you're having at home, have you invited God in yet? Those issues you're having in your marriage, have you invited God into your marriage yet? Have you said, okay, God, I'm gonna not lean on my own understanding. I'm not gonna figure this thing out for myself. I'm gonna trust and lean on you for this. Those issues at work, those problems you're having in school, problems you're having in the neighborhood, those family issues that you got going on, have you invited God into those situations? Or are you still trying to work them out yourself? The Bible says if we invite God in, he will direct our paths. I admonish you, saints of God. Follow the good things that Jeroboam and Rehoboam did. Wait patiently. Seek out godly counsel, but then make sure you follow that godly counsel. And last but not least, invite God into the situation. Make room for God. Make room for him in your problem, in your situation. Invite him in and allow him to work. And then follow the advice and the direction that he leads. God bless.